Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be going over the layer layers on Krita, all the different options you've got to use on your work. So here is my line work layer. It's just plain, normal, setting, passing is 100%. I put her eyes as glue on that layer, just to something I do pretty often. Below it is a group layer called color. I have all of my color settings here. The This bottom one is just the plain flat color. There's nothing special to it, no changes in the settings, no shading, no lighting, no nothing. That's good, that's what I want. When I go to do the shading, I'm going to actually select this little option here. Um, it's going to inherit the alpha. And you can see it, I can't really move my pen, but if you look in this box, it's above showing here, there's a section that called, that's called Inherit Alpha. Of course it moved, I'm sorry. Try it again. Yeah, Inherit Alpha. That says yes. It's inheriting everything from the layer below. If I switched it up, let's say I moved the this on. I moved that below, it's not going to do anything. Nothing at all. It's still inheriting something, but not from this. It's not working how we want it to work. So this is going to be the shading. Let's move that back up. Now, there are a bunch of other different options here that I've been using. The eye is obviously for the, the visibility. The lock is to uh, lock the layer so I can't change this color. Nothing. This stop symbol is here and again like I just went over the lock uh, the inherent alpha and the lock transparency lock transparency you're going to want to use if you're going to be drawing in the same layer see anything transparent I can't color over and taking that off is not going to change that well it's not going to add where I scribbled off it is an instant mask it's a little bit different than the inherit alpha. The inherit alpha is still going to have everything you used outside the lines, but it's only going to show what's inside um, the alpha. So we turn that off. As you can see, I scribbled outside of my gut of my lines, and it's showing up again. But if I turn that inherit alpha back on it disappears completely and it only applies to the alpha below which is great because then you can just keep adding more layers for shading and adding it on top of each other let's actually do it now and use another blue make it darker you don't have to worry about messing up the original layer Oops. This is really flappy and I'm not going to blend it, but you get the idea. Now, to make sure that this layer, this um, alpha inherit or inherit alpha setting is only working on the layers you want, it's a really good idea to group them together. If you don't group them together, it's going to affect everything below it as well. So, for example, um, this gray background is its own color. I don't have it as a canvas color right now. It's its own layer. I don't want this to affect that layer at all. So if I take it out of the group, it's going to affect it. If I put it back in the group, it's only going let's move it up one. It's only going to affect that color layer I made. It's really really important to remember because once you start adding a bunch of layers, it's going to get a little crazy. Alright, and then last is I just add a separate layer for the highlights in her suit. I did add a lighten option. I didn't really need to at the time, but I wanted to make sure it was um, really getting that full effect. Alright, and there's one more option I want to share with you uh, that I really, again, 
like um, for Krita. So I'm just going to close this and open up a new document to show you how I used it. This is a character concept I've been working on for a group project I'm part of. This is ridiculous to do lots of lots of layers. I have one, two, I have three, four groups, no, five groups of layers. They're all different and looking at this from an outsider's perspective, I'm making like two different options and variations of this clothing and that's a lot to erase and draw again and to erase and draw again because I have one with the cape and one without the cape. That's a lot of work. So, how do you get around that? Well, <sighs> let me take this off and find that layer. Here we go. So, I've been, there's a setting called erase for your layers. And when I figured out how to use this, it was really amazing. When I'm doing outfits, I have a full nude body, nothing crazy showing. And you turn that off too. Oops. There we go. Um, I do have a full nude body, and I use that to go and overlay the clothes on. Now, here are the clothes. They're on there, but then that's all of the line work that's not going to be shown, like her legs, um, part of her, her muscle on her arm, under the sleeves, and her feet. That's a lot to erase and then keep redoing and everything else. I don't want to do that. That's just a lot of work. So, using this erase function, it's gone. It's completely gone. I don't have to worry about it. And I'll show you how that works. We make a new layer. We're going to select Erase. You want to make sure you're on brush mode. You're on normal. You're not on Erase because you're, even though we're technically erasing, it only works if you're on a normal mode, not on actual Erase. So I'm just going to start drawing, coloring, whatever you want to call it. Make this bigger. And it's just disappearing. Now we're not actually erasing it, which is fantastic. I'm sure, really erase her head while we're at it, just so you can get an idea of how it works. So we basically just kind of made a mask to mask off the areas we don't want to see. Now if we go back to normal, all these blue areas are the mask. If you turn it off, it's still there. This is non-destructive editing. It's really, really awesome, and you really want to use this. It will save you time and headaches. You won't have to be like, oh man, I have to redraw it all over again, or I have to duplicate that layer again. No, you don't. You just have to make sure you're using the right layer mode. Ta da! And it's gone again. I, I, this has totally streamlined my workflow, and I love it. So we can turn that layer off, we can turn my original one back on. And again, kind of like how it's going over with the Inherit Alpha, you want to make sure it's in the same group. So it only affects what is in that group and not everything outside of that group. Because if I take it outside of the group, it's going to affect everything. I don't. It's going to be a mess. So we're going to turn the color back on. It works the same way for the color. She had a, a, a version of this outfit with a cape and without. Close that. Open this group up. So, of course, I have her clothing work, line work, showing up under here. I don't want that. So, I have to turn on a layer now. Okay. Sorry. Again, a lot of groups of layers, a lot to go over. And I named them, and obviously, I still can't remember what I'm doing. So, uh, I made a new group layer with all the line work. Or, um,. Duplicating the main line work for this, uh, just so I could make sure that the erase la layer only affected this group. 
Um, I could put them in the same group, but for me, I'd rather just put it in one group so I can just turn it on and turn it off. And turn off that one color layer for the cape. It's a little bit easier. It's all together. Ta-da! Turn that off. So, let's see erase layer here. I turn that off. Everything's going to show up underneath again. And there we go. I'm going to actually rename this to erase. So this layer here is erasing all the clothing artwork or line work under the cape completely on every aspect. This is a really useful layer. I highly recommend using it. I will actually show you what it does in Photoshop if you're going to export your file to Photoshop. Um, it, Photoshop obviously is not going to recognize that layer. It's not going to recognize that layer mode at all. It's going to see it as this. Scribbles. All over. There's scribbles everywhere. There are different col colors as well because I use different colors so it doesn't really matter what color you're using. It's just going to erase it. Which is pretty neat because you don't have to worry about, oh I gotta use the red, oh I gotta use black, or erase, or whatever. Alright, so I'm going to see this out as a Photoshop file. I'm going to show you how to get around um, the crazy thing that Photoshop does with it. So I'm in Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to get rid of that access shading color we used to shade the flat work. Because there's no erase mode or inherit alpha from the layer below in Photoshop. That, or that transfers over automatically at least. Alright, so go to the layer with your flat color. That's this here. It's plain red and black. Layer 6 that's highlighted here. Take your wand tool. Select everything in that layer, and then go to and invert it. So you don't want what's outside of that color, you want what's inside. Click on your shading color layer, and there's a create mask feature on the bottom here. Just hit that and it's gone. You don't have to worry about it anymore. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Alright, so thanks for watching. Uh, do support me by subscribing, liking, sharing, or you can donate to my Patreon, which is also linked in the description. Um, if you are, I also link to the background image if you need one for your own computer. So yeah, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, my Twitter handle is on the bottom of this video as well. You can go ahead and tweet at me or email me if you need to if you have any other questions or, again, have ideas for the next video. I do plan on doing animation with the um, alpha. I think it's the alpha of Krita that they have out right now. Um, I'm not sure how soon I can get that out. I might be doing other things in between. Um, but if you really want me to show you how to do that, let me know. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helped you guys out.